Hello, everyone, and welcome into this edition of Red Hawk Football Weekly. I'm Steve Baker, the voice of the Red Hawks, celebrating a Miami Mid American Conference opener win over Buffalo on Saturday. Outstanding football game. Uh, the Red Hawks get the victory and prove to two and three, one and zero oh in Mid American Conference play. Have a bye this week and getting ready for Western Michigan coming up a week from Saturday. Head coach Chuck Martin joins us to talk about this uh, game against the uh, Buffalo Bulls. Coach, defending Mackey's champions and just really one of the best team games I've seen this team play in a while. Yeah, great team effort. Um, coming off 76-5 against the Buckeyes, uh, you come, Buffalo has a huge win against Temple. Uh, he's a very good football team. They're feeling good. We're not feeling so good. Uh, our kids grind it through the week, then the game doesn't start off exactly. You hope to get out to a fast start because they, you know, you know they're feeling good coming in. They're Mac East champs a year ago. They beat us a year ago. They kept us from winning the league a year ago. We were second place. They were first. And then they jump out 14 to three with 11:30 going the second quarter, and uh, it's it's not not looking good for for the Red Hawks. And then a tremendous job by our coach staff, but tremendous job by our kids. They went out and played. Like mm -hmm. they've been outscored 90 to eight the last 98 points, and in basically one football game. You talk about the last three quarters of Ohio State and the first first quarter in a couple minutes of this game and you're talking getting outscored 98 and then we scored 31 straight points special teams played phenomenal throughout Sam Sloman on field goals and on kickoffs lights out Kyle Kramer lights out kicking the ball our coverage units were good Mo Thomas punt returns three punt returns 26 yard average keeping us on short fields defense gets their footing after an 82 yard touchdown where their best player ran through three of our best players uh, next five possessions, we hold them to 58 yards, and we get three turnovers in the next five possessions, which directly lead to 10 points. Our offense gets our running game going. Uh, we're missing four of our top six offense line. We're missing three starters, and then we're missing a backup who's become a starter. You got two freshmen at guard. You got a redshirt freshman at tackle. We get our running game going. Uh, James May makes a big play down the field. True freshman Gabbert to two freshman James May, and you look up, and it's 34-14, and you end up getting a really, really good victory. And again. Doubly important because it's a Mac East opponent. Mm -hmm. So now you got all tiebreakers with Buffalo, which again, obviously is key. All the games in the Mac are key, but obviously the Mac East games, if you ever end up in a position of tied with anyone, a head to head competition is going to determine. So you've got a leg up on, you know, them and OU obviously are the preseason favorites to win our half, and, and, and you've got a big victory against them. You, you talked about special teams. Sam Sloman has a uh, 53 yard career high field goal. Kyle Kramer, just an outstanding average. Mo Thomas broke the kick return yard record at Miami University on Saturday and uh, you know and you know just an outstanding effort by them but you wind up sweeping the uh, Mid-American Conference Player of the Week or Athlete of the Week award so you got uh, Sloman as the uh, special teams you got uh, Mike Brown who had an incredible game defensively as a player uh, athlete of the week and then uh, Jalen Bester over 100 yards in his return uh, that uh, doesn't happen often but uh, <laughs> well-deserved honors for all three yeah I've seen Mike Brown is a huge game the first interception, diving, sprawling, great play. Ryan McWood and Miles Reed set up. Miles Reed pressures. McWood pops out, gets a hand on the quick throw, and then Mike does an unbelievable job. The second one, same thing. McWood pressures the quarterback. Mike understands the situation, third and seven, understands what their routes they go to on mm -hmm. third and seven, anticipates the route. He beats the receiver to the spot. Made it look easy, but it was a great heads-up play by Mike being a smart football player. Bester's probably the biggest because he hasn't played since the first half of Iowa. He's playing behind, you know, our seventh, eighth, and ninth old linemen, and we weren't running the ball early at all. And then as the game goes on, we get our footing on our old line. We got these young guys are covering people up, and Bester, it, it was a tough hundred yards. Mm -hmm. uh, Buffalo's coming the game as one of the top rushing defenses in the country, and they just suffocated Temple, who's really run the ball very well this year, and they're holding people under hundred yards a game rushing. So that hundred yards and. Sloman's been really good here for a long time. People are starting to figure it out. They are indeed. Let's talk about that first half and uh, down seven nothing in the first uh, quarter of play. And uh, yeah, Sam Sloman gets that career high field goal of four, 53 yards. Yeah, obviously the three points huge, but we need a lift. We're not. Yeah. We got nothing going on offense or defense at this point. Special teams been good. Uh, we had a short field. We didn't move it very good in Sloman. At least this this was a huge momentum. I know it's just three points, but a 53 yarder. Uh, is a huge kick anytime, but at that point in the game, it was huge. It, it gave our sideline some life. It did. After Buffalo would score on an 82-yard Patterson run, the offense starts to move second and 10. This is Gabbard to another freshman, James May. Yeah, James May, one of his three catches, had three big catches in this game. And again, uh, Sorensen went down. Uh, your, 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 your leading receiver basically hasn't played at all this year. 
and we need other guys to step up, and you're seeing James May and Gabbert doing a good job right there. And we talked about Jalen Bester, third and four, he picks up eight. Yep. Really, really good job all day running the football. He's just a special football player. He's got great feel. He's got great vision. He's crazy explosive and a lot like a Kenny Young, deceptively powerful for his size. He's really strong and explosive. And he can tell you how he can break tackles and bounce off people here. Second and 10 at the 12, Jalen Vester picks up nine, almost gets into the end zone. Yeah, good blocking up front, good seam, bounces off a guy, heads to the corner and gets the ball the way down to the two yard line. Great job of running and, and staying alive. Uh, you, you're sitting there, we're watching it from the press box thinking, okay, he's going to be down, but bounces off the uh, defender and yes. heads towards the end zone. Yeah, and a really good player in Buffalo. Buffalo's defense is really stout. And uh, man, good job here getting it in, uh, get a good push up front, get a good push from behind. Gabbard gets in. We cut the lead to 14 to 10. Yep, 14 to 10, and then the defense goes to work. Uh, I think that 82-yard touchdown really inspired the defense because they really just dominated the game after that. Again, a look at the touchdown as Miami's offensive line gets the push and Gabbard gets in, but here is that first interception by Brown. Yeah, great job by McWood. McWood's on a read blitz. If he's clean, he's blitzing. If he's not clean, he's dropping, and he drops out, gets his hand on the football, and does a great job here. And again, just making an incredibly good diving catch for the interception. Then on the uh, next possession, third and five, uh, Matt Myers fumbles the football. Yeah, Cam Butler, great job. They run their zone read. Cam, Cam does a great job, stares the quarterback down. The quarterback pulls it. He's responsible for the quarterback. There you see Cam. And then Cam strips the ball right there. The ball's out. McWood finishes it off. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get, we almost got in the end zone there. Their tailback saved the touchdown. We end up settling for three. Yeah, and those three, again, Sam Sloman remained perfect on the day. He actually kicked three in the half. Uh, one, they got a penalty and it took take it off the board, but uh, uh, truly having a special year as Sam Sloman as he has been, uh, you know, knock on wood, perfect on everything this year. Yeah, he's been great. And then obviously kickoff Saturday, seven oh, for seven, seven on touchdowns, seven. Yeah. which again, uh, great for field position, great for the wear and tear on the bodies of the kickoff team with some of our best defensive players around. So, uh, really good bounce back to get 10 points. You're down 14, 13 at half, but really good bounce back from 14 to three. Yeah. Uh, defense is really starting to churn. Special teams keeps going and offense is starting to move the ball. Certainly can see that momentum change as the Red Hawks get to the second half. We'll come back, talk about the second half, and a little bit later on, we'll look a little bit ahead to Western Michigan, the next opponent, but we'll talk about the bye week as well as we continue with more Red Hawks Football Weekly in a moment. Run with us in the unstoppable John Deere Gator XUV 835 and be prepared to go the extra mile. Because when others take rain checks, we take the wheel. With three wide seating, heat, and AC, this is the coolest, most comfortable Gator yet. Nothing runs like a deer. Run with us. Run with us and get $500 off your very own Gator XUV 835M at Koenig Equipment. This segment of Red Hawk Football Weekly is brought to you by Courtyard Marriott Hamilton, conveniently located just miles from Miami University. Welcome back to Red Hawk Football Weekly, recapping the win over Buffalo Saturday at Yeager Stadium by the Miami Red Hawks. I'm Steve Baker, rejoined by head coach Chuck Martin. And coach, uh, you talked a little bit about it in the opening statement about getting this team back. And, and even in that first quarter, kind of having a look in the eyes of saying, okay, now it's time to go. Uh, uh, I, I thought the coaching staff just did a monumental job in getting these guys back focused, and you could see it in their eyes. Once you know they got down that 14 to three, they weren't going to let this one slip away. Yeah, I think they had a really good week of practice. I think they were prepared, but Buffalo's a good team, and yeah. Buffalo was out playing us early in the game. They had 180 yards with 11 minutes to go in the second quarter. You know, and you're down 14 to three, and then it's demoralizing that Patterson runs through three of your best players. I and mean, it's a right. great run by Patterson. We know he's a great player, but that, that's still a demoralizing way to give an eight to your touchdown. Sure. It's not like, hey, you're out of your gap. Hey, you're out of your coverage. Hey, we just physically got beat on that play. And yeah. that happens sometimes, but those are sometimes harder to come back. We talked on the sides. There wasn't a lot of good looks on our sidelines. There was no energy right. in the building. Right? Like I said, if you're a Red Hawk fan, I just appreciate you being there Saturday after 76 to five. Anybody that came out, you know are the true blue fans that really support the Red Hawks. But at that point, they don't feel too good about They've mm -hmm. watched 90 to eight uh, points scored against right. us too, right? So we looked at each other, say, hey, look at each other, because the looks in their eyes weren't good. And I wanted them to look at each other so that they could see, like, it's not, I feel okay. No, you don't feel okay. You look down. And so we talked like, hey, this, it's, the only person who can get you out of this is you. Mm -hmm. 
This is, we talk about adversity all the time. This is actually adversity. This isn't, hey, we overcame a fumble. This is 90 to eight. You're down 14 to three to a really good football team that thinks they're gonna whip your you know what for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. And you got it. And we went out there and we moved the ball a little bit on offense. We pinned them deep. We got a great stop and a turnover. We go down and score. And next thing you know, we slowly built our own momentum, built our own energy and built back our own confidence. It was the third quarter that was a real difference maker for Miami. And the defense gets things started again as we take a look at the highlights. And uh, really, again, third turnover of the day, Mike Brown with the great read on the, uh, on the pass try. Again, this time McWood with the pressure. Uh, Barati takes away the first option. Quarterback doesn't have time. Mike jumps the second route, pick six. We're down 14 to 13 at half. We pinned him deep with a punt. Got a little unlucky because Kobe Burst caused a fumble on the punt. Here you see Mike Brown anticipating the route, beats the receiver the spot. The pressure from McWood didn't allow the quarterback to see Mike. Hey, he threw it right to him. He threw it right to him because he was getting drilled. Yeah. Uh, so great job with the pressure up front. And, and obviously that's a huge, huge play in this football game. You talk about special teams being good. Here's Mo Thomas on the punt return. Again, good job covering up, good hustle back by our, our guy holding up the gunner and then Mo does what Mo does. You give him any space on returns and he's gonna make people pay it. Again, three punt returns for over 26 yard average is, is, is pretty darn incredible. And again, setting up short fields all day for us, long fields for Buffalo. Offense and defense contributed, but special teams were huge. Yeah, you wind up in plus territory. You actually started about the 40-yard line, as you see right there, 39-yard line. And I'm playing the first four plays out of this drive back-to-back -back because it's all run, and you see those, those freshmen up there opening up gaps. They're not huge runs, but nevertheless, you're getting plus yards. Yeah, and these are the hard yards you want. Like you said, getting three or four yards is a lot different than negative one, negative two. We're getting yards on every play. We're moving the ball forward. We're keeping the chains moved. Our backs are grinding, falling forward. Buffalo's a physical, very talented defense, very hard to run against. And again, you see our offense do a really good job. Here we get three plays and we grind out a first down. Now we're inside the 30. You know, we're getting setting up Sloman for another field goal potentially. And then first and 10, here's Brett Gabbard on the scrabble. Yeah, great job by Brett. Doesn't force a ball in a bad situation. Gets us seven yards on first down. You're sitting at second and three. Good protection up front. Nobody's open. Feels, feels a little late pressure and then turns into a positive play. And when they got pressure, we got turnovers. When Brett got pressure, he turns into a nice seven-yard gain. Couple of plays, third and six at the 13. Beautiful pass and catch. Yeah, great throw and catch here. Great job by Brett. Found the one-on-one -on -one matchup. And then great job by Jalen Walker. Gave Brett enough space. Brett throws in a great spot, and Jalen makes a phenomenal contested catch, as you'll see right here in the back of the end zone. And now from 20 to 14, you have some momentum, you get another stop, and then the offense converts and turns into seven points, and you're up 27 to 14. Just an outstanding job there by Jalen Walker. Miami would take over on downs after the next uh, Buffalo drive. They couldn't convert on fourth down, and here on first and 10 from the Miami 44, the biggest play of the game. Yeah. James May pitching in, great throw by Brett, great route. James May gets open behind the coverage, holds on the ball, we're down to two yards. Another stop, we've got three straight stops. We've converted into touchdown on the last drive. Now James May makes his really first big, big play as, as, as a Red Hawk kid that showed up here late June and he's contributing already. Next play, Jalen Bester gets the score. Yeah, good job up front, seal, no penetration, gave Jalen enough room. Jalen has great feel and vision. Uh, and, and bounces this one to the outside. But we cover everybody up on Buffalo inside and out. We seal the edge with our receiver right there. Jalen bounces it out. Another good block on the perimeter by Mayak and Jalen walks in the end zone. Uh, outstanding second half for Miami. Buffalo would add a touchdown, make it a 34-20 finish. But uh, just uh, as we talked about, uh, everybody contributing. And, and it wasn't like, and, and you said it before we actually went on the air, it wasn't like there was one player just standing out above everybody else. This was a team effort. Everybody that got into the game contributed. Yeah, and sometimes when you're down like we were, you need somebody to put the team on the back. You know, mm -hmm. what I mean? you need somebody mm -hmm. to just okay. Gus Raglan puts the team on his right. back, or somebody somebody on defense puts it. Like it wasn't as like it was collectively on our sidelines. Said, hey, we're not done yet. We're not going away like this. We're going to keep fighting. And we made a play. Then we make another play. And then pretty soon we're. You've got your momentum back. You've got your confidence back, and everybody's contributing. Defense is contributing with stops and turnovers. Offense, obviously, is taking that field position in the second half and turning them into seven points. Obviously, special teams was lights out throughout the whole contest. Mo has another big punt return in that third quarter right. that sets up a 39-yard scoring drive for our offense. So special teams was phenomenal throughout. Defense, the last three quarters, and offense kind of the last two and a half to three quarters. 
they got it going too. So a really, really awesome week for Miami football. Awesome week for these kids. Like I said, when they're 30, 40, 50, 60, there's going to be times that they're going to remember the Ohio State to Buffalo and what can happen if you don't quit on yourselves, if you don't quit on your teammates, if you don't quit on your family, if you don't quit on your job, if you keep believing, you keep persevering, even though it looks bleak and then it looks even bleaker, you keep plugging away in life and sometimes good things happen. It does indeed. Miami has a bye week this week. We'll come back and talk about that when we return with more Red Hawk Football Weekly in a moment. This segment of Red Hawk Football Weekly has been brought to you by Courtyard by Marriott Hamilton, conveniently located just miles from Miami University. Final segment of Red Hawk Football Weekly for this week. Of course, Miami coming in off that 34-20 victory over Buffalo with a bye week. As head coach Chuck Martin rejoins us, coach, uh, sometimes they're a blessing. Sometimes you, you want to get out there and continue the momentum. And obviously, that would be a choice if it weren't for so many injuries on this team. Yeah, obviously, we're coming off a great win, so you'd like to keep playing. But we're, we, we've, we've been through tough five weeks physically. Yeah and mentally so physically this is going to give us a good time we talked in post game we've talked earlier like our medical staff probably deserves a game ball for saturday <laughs> just yeah. getting as many kids ready to play and then even during the game keeping as many kids out there as they could and our medical staff's been unbelievable this year so this this is coming at a good time we're coming off a really nice victory against a mac east opponent we're going to have we're going to get some kids that aren't haven't missed time but are really beat up right. really feeling a lot better two weeks from now we're going to get other kids probably healthy and ready to play and, and, and really, really feeling good. And then even even with this, if, if you got to miss some time, this is you're not missing a game this week. So right. you're, one of the weeks you're missing is a bye week, which is always good if you're out hurt. So it is coming at a good time mentally and physically. We're feeling good about ourselves. We can really assess what we've done well. We can assess what we haven't done as well. This week we started getting ahead on Western, which is nice. They've got a big game with Toledo this weekend. But also we can look at some things that we know we need to clean up and focus on a little bit of our in-house stuff mm -hmm. at each position to keep growing and, and getting better in 2019. You know, the, the physicality of the games that we've been playing in, and even Saturday was a very, very physical football game. And, and Saturday in 90 degree heat, the humidity was just outrageous. That has to take so much more, especially if you're aching a little bit or you got a little bit of a stinger or something, that's just got to make it just even more miserable. Yeah, no, that's, that's why I was a little bit <laughs> tear, tear up in post game and I, yeah, I know yeah. I watch our kids every moment every day and what they what they're going through and what 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 they've gone through so far this year right. uh, you like challenges we've had an awesome challenge right and, and they've they've met every challenge head on have we have we conquered every challenge no we didn't conquer every challenge but they met it we came ready to play every week we came out and they came out of the blocks throwing haymakers and doing everything we can and then we got put in a very mentally tough situation going into, you got Buffalo at seven and one year ago, they won the league. We lost a knockdown drag out on a Tuesday night in Buffalo mm -hmm. that as it turns out is a difference between being, you know, there's 12 MAC teams, they were one, we were two. And then there was 10 teams below us a year ago in our league. Yeah. And that's a game that kept us. Now they are coming off a huge win. So just those kids and, 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 and what they accomplished physically, like you're talking about, but what they've overcome mentally. mentally. It is pretty amazing group. Well, enjoy the bye week if you can. I know there's a lot of work to do, yes. but uh, enjoy that, and we'll talk about Western next week. How about that? Sounds good. Head coach Chuck Martin joining us, and that'll do it for this edition of Red Hawk Football Weekly. Thanks for watching.